Well, good afternoon, Nottingham. We're here just for a, a short while this afternoon to uh, up up a bit, right? Okay. Just to uh, share with you the the good news. You know, there is some about. Um, perhaps, maybe you think not, but were you to open the Bible, God's Word, um, maybe um, could offer you. Uh, the opportunity of uh, receiving New Testament in its uh, entirety, yours to take and do with as you will. You would like one, please feel free to come and ask for one. It is, after all, the Word of God, and maybe, perhaps, as you read it, maybe you get, um, you know, a surprise or two. You know, it's. Uh, Maybe not what you think it is, you know, it's um, not, uh, it's not religion, you know. Um, what I mean by that is it's, um, you know, it's not man's way, it's not a system, you know, invented and uh, erected by men to climb their way back to God. But it's the good news that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to do that for us that we could not do ourselves, you know, because here's the thing, you see that uh, the cross of Jesus Christ, it declares two things very, very emphatically. One is this, that all men are sinners, every single one of us. And also the second thing is that none of us can save ourselves. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, had to come down into this world in order to die on that cross, to rise again from the dead, in order that you might be justified, that is, made right with God, and that you might receive newness of life. You see, friends, impossible for you and I to, to get ourselves right with God. And so I use the term religion, you see, in the sense of your world religions, you know. Um, Buddhism, Confucianism, Roman Catholicism, Islam, the whole, the whole lot, you know, of your world religions, there is not one iota of salvation in any one of them. Because they're all man-made, man-invented systems. It's man trying to reach up to God when God himself has reached down to man in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. But of course, the Bible tells us that unless, you know, there's a point in your life, unless there's a, a time perhaps that you can point to, a day perhaps or a month, that was the time when the change took place. That was the time when I was born again. That was the time when I was converted. That was the time when I renounced my sin, the world, the devil, and everything that was opposed to God. I renounced it and I turned to God's Son, Jesus Christ, consciously, deliberately, and I believed I trusted in Him for salvation. Because unless you can do that, then I have to say, you, you might be religious, you might be a church goer, you know, and you might have been for many, many years, all the days of your life, but unless you can point to such a time, unless you have been converted, well, Jesus says, you will not enter the kingdom of God. We have to, Jesus says, he puts it this way, he says we have to become as children, not in our behavior, we can do that quite easily. No, no, not in our behavior, but in that childlike trust, you know. God loves those with a childlike trust, faith in Him and in what He has revealed in His Word, the Bible. So you see, friends, it's, it's, uh, it's that trust, it's that faith, you see, that brings salvation. That's the act, you see, that brings salvation to a man or woman. A childlike trust in Jesus and what he has done, not what you do or can do or will do, because there's nothing that you can do that will, that 
will bridge that gap, that will, that will reconcile you to God, nothing at all. Because all we are before God in nature and practice, all we are before God is sinners, and so they're empty for anything. Anything at all that we would offer to God is painted with sin, unacceptable to God, like filthy rags, he says. And so therefore, friends, it has to be by the righteousness of another. Even Jesus Christ, he is the revealed righteousness of God, and in him and in him alone can we be found credited with righteousness in the eyes of God. So the command today, friends, here in Nottingham City Centre, once again is this, as the Bible says, you can check it out if you want, Acts chapter 3, that's a book in the Bible, Acts chapter 3 verse 19, be converted. That's God's command to you, be converted, turn. It's a turnabout. It includes repentance, a change of mind, and it includes, of course, faith towards the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who says, Repent ye and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's a change of mind. It's a change of feelings that results in conversion, a turning from sin, the world, the devil, and turning to God through his son, Jesus Christ. It's an about turn, if you like, facing uh, the opposite direction, going a different way. A man's way, you see in the Bible, is his pattern of living, you see? Living in sin, you see? Uh, living in, in what the Bible calls sin, you know? Things that you ought not to do, that you know that you ought not to do. You know, God says in his word, you know that God is, you know that he exists, it's manifest in you, says God, and you also know the righteous judgment of God are due to you as a result of those things that you do that you ought not to do. You know these things, friends. But instead of smothering the truth, the knowledge that you have concerning God, concerning these things, well, friends, it's an about turn. It's an abandonment of that position that's coming out of self-denial, denying that is the truth that you know about God and about His righteous judgment. And you can live under the delusion that there is no God. And you can live under the delusion that there is no righteous judgment of God. But that is a serious delusion and it will not end well. It will not end well. So I call upon you today to come out from under that self-delusion, that self-denial, and to embrace the truth, the truth alone in Jesus, that is, that will, that will set you free. It's a turning from, it's a converting from your former ways, your former course in sin, to a way, a different way, a way of holiness, because God is holy, and God requires holiness of you and I. And without holiness, God assures you that you will never see God. You will never see the Lord in love, in grace, that is. Or you'll see Him in judgment and wrath, but not, not in grace and love. You see, you know that God is, but... You know him in wrath and displeasure. You know that he's not well pleased with you. And that's one of the reasons why you smother the truth of the knowledge of God. You know that God is, but you deny the knowledge of him. Why? Well, the Bible says because you have a corrupt nature. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God, the psalmist tells us. Psalm 14, verse 1, and the following verse tells us why. Because they are corrupt. We all of us, born into this world with corrupt natures and therefore, as far as God is concerned, corrupt practices. So you see, friends, there has to, there has to be this change. There has to be this mega change, this conversion experience. If you've not been converted, then you need to be. And God's command to you today is be converted from darkness to light, from Satan to God, out from under the snare of the devil, set free, loosed by the power of God in Jesus Christ, 
and brought to a knowledge of the love and the grace of God that is offered to you in the gospel, friends. It's good news. Christ Jesus came into the world not to make you religious, not to make you respectable, not to make you self-righteous even, but, you know, to, to, to save, to rescue men and women trapped in their sin, trapped in their, in their course, their, their natural course in sin, and trapped, of course, in those, those natures in which you were born sinful natures for which come quite automatically quite naturally did I see the sinful practice and restored to fellowship with God and restored to the image of God the Bible tells us you see that man was made in the first instance I mean he was made in the image of God but he set out many he sought out many inventions uh, uh, the word of God says but made first of all in the image of God. You see, what's the image of God? A true knowledge of God and a perfect righteousness. But now that's gone, completely gone. Now men and women fallen in sin are in the image of the enemy of God, of Satan. And friends, the only way that you can be restored, you see, to the image of God. That's God's redemption. That's God's salvation the restoration of the image of God you see in men and women created by God and recreated in the image of God given a true knowledge of God and given a perfect righteousness and friends those can only be obtained through the Son of God Jesus Christ he alone can reveal God to you he alone his righteousness, you see, imputed to you by faith, you see. Then you stand in a perfect righteousness, but not until. So as I look around me in Nottingham City today, throughout the country, throughout the world, I see men and women without the true knowledge of God, without a perfect righteousness. So not in the image of God. But the gospel, the good news is that you can be restored and to fellowship, friendship with God. Instead of him being your worst enemy, he becomes your best friend through Jesus Christ, his son. This is the love of God, you see. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Friends, God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. We are all of us naturally born. We are condemned under the condemnation of God because of our sinful natures and sinful practices. That's why we need to be converted. That's why there must needs be this change of mega, I tell you, of cataclysmic proportions inside of you, in your heart. Your world religions, you see, they'll treat you on the outside They'll make you look different, make you go different places, but they won't change you on the inside. It's only the gospel. It's only my gospel that will do this for you. It's good news, friends. Restore to friendship with God. God, your friend, smiling upon you. Peace with God. Reconcile to God. In love with God and loved by God. Instead of the opposite, instead of the other. So what's this conversion of which the Bible speaks demands of you? Be converted. Be converted is God's command to you today. It's a change of your understanding. For the Bible tells us, friends, that your understanding is darkened. You do not understand the things of God, the kingdom of God. Jesus, he says to a religious man on one occasion, he said that, he told him that he must be born again. And he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see, perceive, that is, the kingdom of God, let alone enter into it. You can't understand the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? It's not about, again, it's not about religion. It's about power. It's about grace. It's about love. The kingdom of God is about the kingdom of God's power the power 
to break into the heart and lives of men and women and change them from the inside out. Make them new creatures in Jesus Christ. Only the gospel, you see. Only the powerful, mighty rule of King Jesus breaking into the hearts of men and women by the grace of God and wonderfully changing them, transforming them for the better, taking away from you that which keeps you from God and bringing to you that which yokes you to God and forever. So you see, friends, the understanding is darkened, you know? The mind is futile. That's the way God describes, you know, minds that are, are debased, even reprobate, says God. Oh, hey, madam, you're a believer? You repented yet, madam, and believed the gospel? You need to be converted, God says. Change of understanding, you see? Here today, you hear the gospel, you know, being preached, and you, you scratch your head, and you say, I don't know what they're talking about, you know? Oh, you understand, when we talk about sin, when we talk about, you know, the, the fornicating, the drug abuse, the, the drunkenness, you know, the abortion, when, when we talk about sin, oh, you grasp it intellectually, uh, we know that because we hear the, we hear the comments, we hear, we hear the words coming from your lips, you know. As the old prophet says, uh, we dwell in the midst of a, a people of unclean lips. We know this because we hear your words. We hear your blasphemies. We hear your, your rebukes. Or oh, you understand it intellectually, but you don't understand it spiritually. The danger, the damage, the destruction of your sin, that unless, unless you are converted, unless you arise and go to Christ and receive light, Friends, you will never understand. The kingdom of God will always ever be a mystery to you. You will never understand the things of God. Not even the ABCs of the gospel. Never mind the deep mysteries of God. So you see, be converted, you know. A change, a dramatic change from darkness to light. The light of God, the light of the world, Jesus shining, commanding the light to shine into your heart and mind and revealing to you the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It's wonderful good news. And with that understanding comes, you see, comes an understanding of your sin and what it's like in reality. Not a fun thing, you know. Not just some mistakes that you've made along the way. But something that's tragic, something that's destructive, something that's destroying you in body and mind and will destroy you eternally if you are not converted. I tell you, friends, were you to be given a glimpse of the reality of your sin, you would swim shark-infested waters to get to Jesus Christ because He alone can save you from it. So be converted, a change, a change in the understanding, and of course a change in your judgment, you know? From error, from that which is false to the truth, you know? Abandoning the false and embracing the truth. Because the truth is, the truth of the matter is in your sinful nature, you'll embrace everything and anything but the truth. Or you'll embrace the evolutionary lie. You'll embrace false religion, idolatrous religion. Don't you know, friends, don't you know that, that God tells us in His Word in the Bible that everything religious outside of what God has revealed in His Word is nothing but idolatrous religion. That's your world religions again. Every single one of them. Nothing but man-made devices. Nothing but idolatrous religion. So be converted. Be converted, says God. Abandon that which is false and embrace the truth because it's only the truth that will make you free. That will set you free to worship God, to do that for which you were made, created for. To be a friend of God, to serve God, to worship God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. To know Him and to love Him and to be loved by Him. 
the truth, friends. And I tell you, I submit to you, there is no truth outside of God's Word, outside of the Bible. God's indictment, you see, is that all men are liars. All men. So therefore, there is no truth outside of what God speaks. And God speaks in the Bible. You want to hear, a, you want to hear an audible voice? Is that, what we, is that what it would take you to believe in God? You want to hear an audible voice, you know, from God? Well, then read the Bible out loud. Read the Bible out loud. The Bible's God's Word. It's the truth, friends. And it's nothing but the truth. And it's truth that will liberate you. It's truth, friends, that will change, that will transform you from the, the worst to the better. Bring you, bring you back to God. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the truth. He's truth personified, you know. And he came into the world, what for? To bring to us grace and truth. Eh? By Moses, the Old Testament prophet, by Moses came the law, but the law couldn't save us. The law of God wasn't given to save you, but God did through His Son, Jesus Christ, what the law could not accomplish. God accomplished through His Son, Jesus Christ. He brought, He came with the grace and the truth, the grace, the favor of God that you do not deserve. None of us deserve. And the truth you see that will make you free. But there has to be conversion. Be converted, says God. Abandon, denounce, forsake the lie, forsake the false. Turn from it and be converted, embracing the truth. The truth of God's word about God, about yourself, and about your sin. And where your sin is going to take you because the truth is this. That your sin will take you one day where you do not want it to take you. It will take you out of this world. It will take you into the presence of a holy God and judge. There's some truths that you need to know in order that you might obey, in order that you might embrace those truths. And I'll tell you what some of them are. God is your creator. Yes, no, rather, you are not, you are not hatched in some primordial sludge. You're not a piece of chemical fizz according to evolution. You're a man, a woman made by God and for God. God is your creator and God is your lawgiver. By dint of his being your creator, God has the sovereign right to command you, to demand of you how you should live in his world. God is your lawgiver, and He is your judge. He is already judging you at this moment, but one day He will finally judge you. And I hope and pray that today you will be converted, and that He will become your Redeemer, also your Savior, because no other can. So, be converted, a change. A change in your understanding, a change in your judgments, a change in your affections, you know. From the carnal, selfish desires, you know. Abandoning them and embracing, you know. Loving that which you should love. I mean, ought you to love sin? Ought you to love the filth and uncleanness that disgraces and shames your society, your families. Ought you to be in love with sin? Ought it to be, ought it to be a source of entertainment for you? I mean, fornicating and adultery and violence in the extreme. Ought that to be a source of entertainment for you before your television screens and your internet screens? Is that how you ought to conduct yourself in God's world? In love with carnal desires? Lusts that eat into your soul and are destroying you even now? Don't you see why God says, be converted? That your affections, that your desires ought to change, but of course, 
That's not in your power to do. Again, you see, that's why Jesus says that you must be born again. Because it's only, you see, in that miraculous, supernatural intervention of God, breaking in to a man or woman's heart by grace and causing them to be renewed within, given new desires, new affections, loving what you once hated, loving God, that is, and hating what you once loved, the sin, the carnality, the filth and uncleanness. You see, friends, you must needs be converted. God demands it of you. He commands you, be converted. A change in the will from your stubborn rebellion against your Maker living day by day with your fist in your Maker's face, turning from such rebellion, such iniquity that has separated you from God, from your best good. and reconciling you to Almighty God, turning from the way of sin and death, the law of sin and death even, to life and liberty and love through God's Son, Jesus Christ. Eternal life even. And eternal life, of course, spoken of in God's Word, is not just simply about life never ending, that's included, of course, but a quality of life, you see, without the, the felt and muck and mire of sin. It is a, a quality of life here and now in this world. You see, you can, you can actually live without sin, you know. You can actually be happy. In fact, you can be actually more happy without the sin, without the rebellion, without the anarchy against your Maker. Be converted, says God. You must needs be converted in order to enter God's kingdom, in order to be reconciled with God, uh, in order to be right with God. And so what you see are the means of this conversion. Well, it's by God's grace, by God's grace that anybody is saved. The grace of God is the gift of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ, whom I declare to you here today. And our dear friends, that grace of God is given. It's given by Him to whoever He pleases to give it to. It's not of you to demand it. Ask by all means, seek, knock, and ye shall find, and the door shall be opened unto you, Jesus says. Or you may ask. But God gives His grace. You see, it's a free gift. And God gives, you see, to whosoever He pleases to. But the grace of God, you see, it cannot be worked for. You cannot be religious for it, you know. You cannot be respectable and morally upright for it. You cannot do nothing for it. It is a sheer, it is an absolute gift of God. It's by grace, you see. That's the means of conversion, you see. Not in your power. Not in your power to become a Christian. Not in your power to do anything to reconcile you to God. It's been done. Jesus Christ has accomplished what needs to be done. And only by the grace of God, you see. But here's the thing, you see, through the proclamation of the gospel, which is foolishness is God to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it's the power of God, you see. The power of God unto salvation, that is. By grace, you see. By grace are you saved. Only the grace of God, that's the means by which a man or woman is converted, you see. And by God's word, you see the proclamation of God's word. So I stand before you today with an open Bible. Because I want you to know, I want you to understand that what I'm saying is not my opinion, not my thoughts. And it's not the thoughts of men. Some people, they say rather impudently to me sometimes, or they tell me, they say, men wrote the Bible. Do you really think so? How would you describe yourself if you were to write the Bible? Would you, would you describe yourself as a deceitfully hearted 
and desperately wicked sinner? Is that how you would describe yourself? No, I don't think so. I don't think that any man would, any sinner man would. No, friends, the Bible was written by God. Every word of it, inspired of God, breathed out by God. And in the proclamation of the word, of the word of God amongst people such as this here in Nottingham City Center, God causes men by his grace to hear the word of God, but not just with the outward hearing of the ears, with the inward, the inward hearing of the soul. They hear the call of God, and they come and they be converted. But friends, unless God smiles upon you, unless he imparts grace to you, unless he calls you, I can call you all day long, but you won't come. But if God calls you, you'll come. You'll be converted in the way that is of repentance and faith and obedience to the truth. There is no other way. Why, Jesus declares, commands, repent ye and believe the gospel. But you see, my friends, when God calls, when God calls you effectively, oh, you will come, you will be more than happy to repent, more than happy to believe, more than happy to obey the truth of God. But until then, you might as well try and pull yourself up by your bootlaces as try to repent and believe of yourself. Well, you might say, you might say, well, well, why does Jesus command us to do so if we cannot ourselves? Well, to bring you to that place of knowing and understanding you can't do it yourself. That you're impotent, that you're powerless, and that you would cry to God for help. Because our help is in the name of the Lord and in the Lord only. There is no other who can help you. There is no other who can rescue you. You're shut into your sin nature. You're locked into it. You're snared in the devil's trap. And dear friends, there's only one, Jesus, the Son of God, who came into the world for sinners, who lived and loved and died, who shed his precious blood, that by the power of his shed blood that men and women might be loosed from the snare of the devil, loosed, loosed from the, the entrapment of their sin, Oh, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you been set free? Have you been converted? Are you forgiven? This is the heart of the gospel, friends. Forgiveness, that there is forgiveness with God. Bless you. That you might be forgiven. The slate white clean, right with God. Fit for life and fit for purpose and fit for heaven one day. But you must be converted. God demands it of you, commands it of you. It's an absolute necessity. Because we are all of us naturally born of a debased mind, a fallen nature, wretched, depraved even as the word the Bible uses. That's all of us. That's our natural born state and condition. And maybe perhaps if you were to begin to understand that, your true, your real nature, what it is that you really are, you would begin to understand that religion just does not cut it. It takes power from God, almighty power, the same power that created the universe. It takes to change a sinful man or woman and make them again into the image of God. Oh, it takes more power than you've got. More power than I've got. Friends, it's an absolute necessity. Be converted, says God, because without conversion, without you are truly converted, you remain in the misery of your sin, in restlessness, without peace. Not an ounce of peace. Oh, a man said to me on one occasion, I have everything a man could wish for, but oh, I wish I had just a modicum of peace. My house is paid for, 
my family are cared for and they love me. I've got everything he said, but oh, that I could just have a measure of peace in my mind. I guess maybe there's a lot of people in Nottingham today could deal with the me could do with a measure of peace. Peace with God through the blood of God's Son Jesus Christ and the peace of God that passeth all understanding is given to such who are converted, who turn from their sin, its misery, its wretchedness, and its restlessness, and hopelessness, and given a hope that does not, does not disappoint. You will not be confounded, says God, to those who believe in Jesus. You cannot be, for he is yet mighty to save. Without conversion, friends, you remain under the condemnation of God. You remain unforgiven. You remain with your sin against you. And I tell you, you go out of this world in your sin. You remain all that you remain that way for all eternity. There's no changing there's no changing after you go out of this world. There are no second chances. There's only heaven or hell, one of the two. And if you go out of this world unforgiven, your sin untreated, then I have to tell you solemnly and seriously, it's hell's damnation for you. It's not serious. You live in a day and generation when everything's frivolous and everything has to be light, you know? Even in your churches in Nottingham today, everything has to be skittish, you know? Make them feel good. Send them home feeling good. Don't dare send anybody away feeling bad about themselves. Well, I would to God you did feel bad about yourself. I would to God, I would to God that he would lead you to a right and proper self-despair. An understanding that you cannot save yourself and that you're lost and you're facing eternal damnation unless you are converted. Be converted, friends. Because without conversion you remain an heir, an heir. You have an inheritance. We all have an inheritance, all of us. Your father, your mother might cut them out of cut you out of their will, but you have an inheritance, either eternal wrath or eternal glory. Which will it be, friends? Which will it be? You must needs be converted. So I, I urge you, friends, to seek. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near, and do so with gratitude, with humility, with a Bible in front of you, true knowledge, and with a willingness to obey the truth, to be converted. Friends, there, there are none of you, none of you, so good that you do not need to be converted. And there are none of you so evil that you are beyond conversion. There is no sin deeper than the grace of God in Jesus Christ. And I tell you, friends, you who are respectable and self-righteous and who would look down your maybe even religious, respectable noses at those who are worse than you, I tell you there are prostitutes and drug addicts, murderers and pedophiles that will enter the kingdom of God before you because they repent and believe the gospel, because they be converted. That's why. It's the only thing that keeps you from the kingdom of God, friends. Unbelief, your refusal to believe in the name of God's only begotten Son. So I urge you, consider your ways. Be wise. What hinders you? Believe the truth today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved. Salvation's what the Bible's about. Beginning to end, start to finish. 
salvation, redemption, the love of God and Jesus Christ for lost, ruined sinners. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. Friends, repent ye and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. Nottingham, hear me, repent ye and believe the gospel. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word. It's offered to you free of charge and without any cost or any obligation to you. The entire New Testament offered to you freely. Yours to do it as you will. Read it. Meditate upon it. Study it. Learn Jesus. Be converted. May God have mercy upon your precious, precious souls.